I want to talk to you on the subject of the theme of our conference, which is Man Your Battle Stations. Um, I am believing that this is the day that we as men are to stand up. Stand up and take our rightful place. Can I get an amen? There's a word, amen, in scripture that if you go back all the way to the book of Exodus, all the way to the book of Acts, resounding, and that word is to rise up. Rise up. Why has this word been right? Because I believe strongly that we have been sitting down for too long. We have been sitting down for too long and we need to rise up, man of God. This word today is for you to get up, get up, and become the priest of your home. The women were not designed to be the priest of the home. The men were designed to be the priest of the home. So it's time that we get up, man of God, get up and take our rightful place. Take your authority. Take your position of authority and begin to do what God has called you to do in the name of Jesus. But that means us standing up, us getting up. Take your authority back. Can I get amen? amen. To some of you, amen, Adam everything was taken away from him in the garden but it was given back to us and we cannot use that as an excuse anymore well if Adam lost it yeah but the second Adam found it and gave it back to us are you here so we have to take our position back he went to hell and he, and he took the keys and he came and he gave them to the church and he said now you go and you make disciples you go and you baptize and you go and you do this and he did not just send us he empowered us to do that. It's not just enough for us to have the Holy Spirit, but it's time for us, man, it's time for the Holy Spirit to have us. You can have the Holy Spirit, but it's a different thing for it to have you. Because when He has you, then you do what He says. When you have Him, you might do some things and you might not do some things. But when the Holy Spirit has a hold, grabs a hold of you, then you begin to do what the Holy Spirit says. Can I get an amen? amen? So I want you to grab a hold of this word today in the book of Isaiah chapter 52 verse 2. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 2. We're going to start right there. And when you have it, say amen. Hallelujah. It says this. It says, shake, your, shake off your dust and rise up. Look at your neighbor tell them, shake off your dust and rise up. Sit in throne, O Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains on your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Shake off the dust and rise up. If you... Those of you, and then probably some of you do some dusting or some cleaning at your home, at your home, probably some of you don't. But you understand that if something is sitting at a place for too long, dust will come in and sit on it. If you leave your Bible sitting somewhere, dust will come in and sit. But I want to talk to somebody who has been dusty to get up and dust yourself off. Yeah. I said, dust yourself off. Rise up again. Hallelujah. He said, rise up. He did not say that he's going to come on and come and break and take those things off. He said for you to do it. I told you this before that if I need him to come and do what he called me to do, then what does he need me here for? If God has to come and do what he told me that I needed to do on this earth, then why does God need me? He said you shake yourself off. He said dust yourself off. He said rise up and do what? He says, sit in throne, O Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains that are on your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. So it's time, men, that we rise up to our places. Too many women. And I know that there's too many women that don't have a man in the home. But there's women that have men in the home that are still rising up because the men are not rising up. There's still women that are taking up and you see more women in the church than you do men. Why? Because they're rising up to doing something that they weren't called to do because we were called to rise up. We were called to train up a child. We were called to get up. We were called to teach our children, to teach our home, to love and to instruct. We were called to do that. And we have to 
rise up and if the wife doesn't see the husband rising up, she's going to rise up. Because she doesn't want to see the home destroyed. She doesn't want to see our children destroyed. So she's going to get up. But we have been called to do that. We have been called to shake ourselves up. We have been called to rise up. We have been called to break those things that have been holding us down. Break them off. Break them off with your neck. Through what? Through prayer. Through the anointing, through the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. We are to stand up, man of God, and take that place that we have to take. Hallelujah. That God has called us. You've been captive for too long. You've been sitting down for too long. It's time to stand up. Hallelujah. And man your battle stations. It's time for you to stand up. You've been sitting down for too long. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you've been sitting down for too long. Come on, somebody. You have to stand up. You have to get up. You have to get up, man. You know why? Because your family depends on it. Your children depend on it. Your wife depends on it. She's waiting for you to stand up. She's waiting for you to stand up. And some, some of us are frustrated. We get frustrated. We get frustrated because things don't go our way. We get frustrated because of this. We get frustrated because of that. But you know what? Just stand up and do exactly what God has called you to do. You were captive in the season, but you're not captive anymore. Because the Bible says that to him whom the Son has set free, he is free indeed. So you were captive, but you're not captive anymore. You are free. You are free to worship. You are free to instruct. You are free to get up. Hallelujah. So man of God, rise up and take your proper domain, your, your, your position. Hallelujah. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Take your children. Take your wife. Hallelujah. Bring them to the house of the Lord. It's not anymore with their, oh my kids don't, you know, it's, it's sad to see that the, 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 the seven-year-old, the six-year-old tell the mom, I can't, and tell the mom and the dad, I, I don't want to go to church. Oh, it's okay. We'll just stay here. No, get them up. Yeah. Somebody needs to take charge. Somebody needs to take authority. And that's what we have been called to do. To take authority. Get up, hallelujah. And take our positions, hallelujah. To be able to do what God has called us to do. Listen, it's time that we get up from our couches. It's time that we leave the remote control on the side. It's time to put the video games aside. And get up and pick up a Bible. Pick up your sword. And begin to take your family back, hallelujah. And begin to take your children back, hallelujah. Get them back in the house. Get them out of the street. Get them back where they need to be. Can I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah. God is calling us to stand up. God is calling us to get up. Are you rising up with me today? I said, are you rising up with me today? In the book of Ezekiel chapter 2, God spoke to Ezekiel. And he told him the same exact thing. In Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1 he said he said to me son of man stand on your feet and I will speak to you and I'm going to speak to you while you're sitting being lazy I'm going to speak to you once you get up I'm not going to speak to you while you're there having your pity party no I'm going to speak to you once you get up son of man get up stand up I want to talk to you I want to direct you. I want to show you what it is that you need to do with your children. I want to show you what it is that you need to do with your wife. I want to show you what you need to do with your household. So stand up. Get up. I have a word for you. Look at your neighbor and tell them, God has a word for you. But you have to stand up. You have to stand up. You have to rise up. Oh, God can come and talk to me anywhere. Yes, he can. But sometimes you get so comfortable in your seat, hallelujah, that we don't get up to do what he called us to do. Can I get an amen? So he said, get up. I got a word for you. I need to speak to you. And then verse 2 says, as, I, as he spoke, mm, as he spoke, the Spirit came into me and, 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 and raised me to my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. The Spirit. The moment that he spoke, his, the Spirit of God came in me. The moment that God said a word, his Spirit took over me. And he rose me up. And he caught me up. And told me. And he set me on my feet. And I heard. And I heard him speaking to me. Church, 
men of God, it's time to go hear the word of God. We have been hearing other things other than the word of God. Some of us have not heard the word of God in a long time. And we need to go back, hallelujah, to hearing the word of the Lord. We need to go back and get instructions. Do you know that we have so many fathers that don't know what to do? Because they've never been, they've never been taught, they've never been instructed. So they don't know what to do. And when you don't know what to do, you, you're, you're more than likely going to lose the generation that's coming right after you. But we need to stand up because I believe God is speaking in these days. I believe God is speaking to somebody in these days and saying, get up, hallelujah, I'm going to show you what it is that you need to do with your children. I'm going to show you what it is, but you have to stand up. You can't do it sitting down. You can't do it laying down. You need to stand up and you need to put action, hallelujah, to what I'm about to tell you. Don't be a hearer of the word, but also be a doer of the word. Can I get an amen somebody? He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to the rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have been in rebellion against me till this very day. I am sending you to a place where there's rebellion. Listen, we are living in a city. We are living in a nation that is rebellious. We are living in a nation and there needs to be some man and women of God that will stand up and say, I will no longer tolerate what's going on outside. The prophet said, hallelujah, yesterday, he said, you know what? You cannot accept your child coming in and tell you, your son tell you, I'm a homosexual. Or your daughter coming in and saying, I'm a No, 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 no. We're not going to tolerate that no more. We're not going to stand for what's going on. We're going to stand up for what the word of God says. Amen. And we're going to go, hallelujah. Because God has instructed us and called us to go out and minister, to go out, hallelujah, to this rebellious generation. How are we to change this rebellious regeneration? You're only going to change it through a word of God. When he speaks, when he sends, he's sending you, but he's already authorized you. And every word that comes out of your mouth will be his word speaking. Can I get an amen, somebody? So he's sending us. And listen, we might be having a rebellious house in our house, but you know what? We, we have tolerated that. We have allowed that to happen in our home. And it's time that we stand up, hallelujah, and not allow these things to happen in our home and stand up and say, no, 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 we're not going to do that no more. We're going to change some things around. We're going to do things a little bit different today. Can I get an amen, somebody? We're gonna, we need some man to stand up and say, we're not going to do the same thing we've been doing because the same thing we've been doing has not brought a change. If you want to change, you have to do something different. If you're, if you're comfortable with what you have or what you've been getting, they continue to do the same thing. The people to whom I am sending you are abstained, obstinate, and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Verse 5 says, And whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are a rebellious house, it says they will know that a prophet has been among them. In other words, know that somebody I am sending is amongst them there. Know that there is a prophet. No, listen, we, we, we are going to get persecuted. We are going to get attacked in, in our life, hallelujah, through people and maybe even the same people, hallelujah, in our, our own house, hallelujah. But God says, let them know. They will know. They will know that there was a prophet, hallelujah, amongst them. There is a prophet within the family. There is a prophet in the house. They will know that there is somebody carrying the word to give instruction. That is you. God is calling you to stand up. God is calling us, church, to stand up and rise up and not be afraid of what may come. Hallelujah. Not be afraid of what's coming. Hallelujah. Because you know what? He is there to protect us. God is there to protect you, church. Hallelujah. God is there to do what he said. Hallelujah. He told us in verse 6, he says, not to be afraid. He said, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. You just speak my word. He said, don't be afraid of them. They won't do nothing to you. Listen, he says in Psalms 91 verse 7, he said, A thousand may fall at your right hand, ten thousand at your left. He said, but they will not get to you. They'll be real close, but they will not get to you. They'll come as close 
to you, hallelujah, at your right hand and your left, but they will not come close to you as far as take you down. They will not take you down. Can I get an amen, somebody? Hallelujah. He says, your eyes will see the punishment of the Lord. Verse 8 says, your eyes will see. God is going to protect us, men of God. When you stand up and do what God has called you to do, God is going to strengthen you. God is going to protect you. Psalms, the book of Psalms says that he's going to send his angels to surround you, to protect you. He sends angels. He sends men and women of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes also to give us a word in the middle of situations that we may be going through at the moment. Can I get an amen? He sends people to protect us, but at the same time, in that protection, he sends angels, men of God, women of God, prophets, to come in and give us a word of instruction of what it is that we need to do. There's angels in the church. There's angels that God has already assigned to send to us. Men that are carrying the word of God. Men that are obeying God to come in and give a word, an on-time word, a word in season that we need. In the book of Exodus chapter 23 verse 20, the Bible says 20 and 21 and 22 says that God sent an angel. God sent an angel. And this is very powerful. He sent an angel to Moses. In the book of Exodus, chapter 20, 23, listen to what it says. Hallelujah. Are you good? 23 verse 20 says this. See, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. He's bringing you out. In other words, he can't bring you through not moving. He ha you have to get up and so he can move you to the place where he said, and he's he already has an angel that he sent to you to bring you. Now listen to what it says, verse 21. It says, pay attention to him and listen to what he says. Do not rebel against him. He will not forgive you. He will not forgive your rebellious since my name is in him. Now verse 22 is very powerful. It says, if you listen carefully to what he says and do all that I say. He said, if you listen to him, because he's not coming on his own behalf. If you listen to him and do everything that I say. He's telling you that he's sending a man and a woman of God to you. Somebody that is going to guide you and direct you. But he's not coming on his own. But he's coming on behalf of God. He's coming in to tell you, he said, if you listen to him and obey everything that I said. Jesus said, I'm sending the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not going to speak on his own thing. He's only going to speak that which he hears from me. So there's men and women of God that God is sending to us to speak and to tell us to get up. There's prophets in the house that tell us to get up. Man our battle stations, take your family back, take your children back. Why? Because when we come together as one, we are, you have to understand that, that as a family, you are very powerful. You are a very powerful family. You have a very powerful family. That's why the enemy has tried to destroy you and your children. Why? Because he knows that if you just come together and agree as one in your house, if you come together and agree as one in your household, things will happen. God says, I will be there. I will do whatever it is that you say. So the enemy is scared of the church. That's why he's coming against the church to try to dismantle, to try to separate the church because he knows how powerful we are. We are very powerful when we come in and when we do what God has called us to do. Men of God, women of God, it's a men of God. I believe there's some women here. Men, you have to stand up. You have to do what God has called you to do. The angel of the Lord has been sent to this house. The angel of the Lord was sent last night. Hallelujah. There's an angel of the Lord sent here today to give us instructions, to give us a word of God, to tell us what it is that God is saying. For thus saith the Lord. That's what they're coming in. This is what God is saying to do. So we have to hear the word, but also so do what the word says. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The word works by works. The word works by those who work the word. Amen. If you don't work the word, the word won't work. So we have to work the word. And it's very powerful 
that the angel comes in to give us instructions. Give us instructions to better our life, better our family. If you remember, hallelujah, when Paul was in prison, an angel appeared to him. When Paul was in prison, an angel appeared for him in chapter 12, verse 7 through 11. The angel came in and told him, rise up. Rise up. Even in your, in your bondage, rise up. He said that the moment that the word of God came to him, the chains fell off of him. The chains fell. Read it carefully. It says that the chains fell. The moment that the word of God was spoken over his life, he got up. The chains fell off of him. The Bible says that he went through the first door and he went through the second door. And the, and the, 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 the guards didn't even see him. He put him past the guards. Hallelujah. But I like what it says towards the end. He said when he got to the gate, to the, to the, to the door that was made out of metal, when it was, the, the door that was made out of, he said, the last door, when he get to the last door, listen, it said that the door opened up for him on its own. When you get up, doors will be opening for you without you having to open up. The Bible says that the moment that he passed, listen, he passed the first door. It doesn't say that he opened it. He passed the second door. It doesn't say that he opened it. But it says very clearly that the last door that he confronted was a, a metal door. And it says it opened up on its own behalf the moment that he stood in front of it. Obedience will always open doors. Obedience will always bring favor to your life. Obedience to God's word will always open up the doors that you thought that were impossible to open. When you obey the word of God, obedience will open up those doors. It said it opened up. He didn't push it. He didn't have to push the door. He didn't struggle with it. As soon as he stepped into the position where the angel told him to go, the door opened up. The moment that you get up from your chair, the moment that you get up from your bed, the moment that you get up, hallelujah, from that comfortable area, the moment that you stand up to the place where you know God has called you, doors are going to be open. Hallelujah. God said, behold, I have opened a, a door for you, an effective door, not just any door, an effective door Amen. for you. An effective door for you. Very powerful. God has already assigned these doors to open. He assigned these doors to open by the time you get there. Can I give an amen, somebody? Are you here with me today? Yeah. Hallelujah. He said that that door opened up for him the moment that he stood in front of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for those open doors. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 10, 12, 10 of the book of Acts. Listen, they passed the first and the second guard and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself. And they went through it. It opened by itself. It opened by the main door, the door that goes to the city, it opened by itself. And we know that it didn't open by itself. We know that God opened up that door. We know that God opened up the door. The moment that Paul got up, chains begin to fall. When you get up, chains are going to fall off of you. When you get up, dust is going to come off of you. When you get up and start walking, the moment that he missed it, he started walking and the first guard missed him and the second guard missed him and he got to the door and the door opened up by himself. The moment that he got up, hallelujah, everything that was on him fell off and then he said, he, he, the angel said, gorge, gorge yourself. He said, put your mantle back on. Put your clothes back on. He said, just go. Come out. And he came out, hallelujah, out of that situation, hallelujah, and everything started working for him. I'm here to tell you today, man of God, hallelujah, that God is telling us to rise up. And the moment that we rise up, things are going to fall off. Chains are going to fall off. Not only of you, but of everyone around you. Hallelujah, my God. I'm here to tell you today that you will survive. I'm here to tell you today that when you rise up, your children will rise up. I'm here to tell you today that when you get up, your children, your family, your wife, your sons, your daughters, they will get up with you. And when everything, everybody starts getting up, things are going to begin to work in your favor. God is going to open up some doors for you.
you. All of a sudden, the phone calls you're going to receive. All of a sudden, job promotion is going to come your way. I'm here to tell you today, hallelujah, that it's time to stop complaining and start acting on the word of God and get up and say, I'm tired of this mess. I'm tired of sitting down. I'm tired of just letting the enemy come in and have his way in my family. But I'm doing something about it today. I'm standing up and I'm adding my, my battle stage. I'm taking my place in the kingdom of God. It's time to get up. It's time to get up. And when you get up, whew, you know why your children haven't got up? Because you haven't got up. You know why your children haven't got up? You know why your wife? It's because you have not done what God has told you to do. That's why. They're waiting on you. And a lot of times we're waiting on them. No, God gave you a word. God gave you a word. You get up. You dust yourself off. Get up and do, hallelujah, what God called you to do. And you know what it starts? It starts through prayer. It starts through praise. It starts through worship. When you get up, hallelujah, and begin to pray and worship God, hallelujah, just like Paul and Silas did, then all of a sudden something's going to happen in your life. Something will happen in your life the moment that you get up. Do I have anybody in here that wants to get up? Yeah. Thank you all two of you. Do I have anybody else in here that wants to get up and say, No, you know what? I'm tired. I'm tired of sitting down. I'm tired, hallelujah, of all this mess. I want to do something different. I told this guy this week, I said, You know what? They're going through some stuff. And I said, Nothing's going to happen until you do something about it. Nothing's going to happen until you man up. And you get up and do something about it. God gave us the tools. God gave us, God has equipped us for such a time as this. God has equipped us and given us the keys to be able to do what God called us to do. But we have to get up. And we have to dust ourselves off. And the moment that we do that, church, just like Paul, doors automatically will begin to open. God will place you with people. God will give you divine connections. God will set you up in places that you've never thought. And it's not based on your education. It's based on your obedience. God is looking for people that are willing to obey Him. I know men and women of God that have so many degrees on their walls, but they don't have an ounce of anointing. And, 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 and there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm here to tell you today that, listen, the revelation of the Spirit, that is the best thing that you can get. So it's time that we rise up and take your family back. Take your children back. Stop letting the devil have your children. Stop letting the enemy have them. And you take them back. And you do what God has called you to do. When you do that, when you do what God has called you to do, my goodness, let me tell you, let me tell you, the glory of God will fall upon your house. Yeah. The glory of God will fall upon your house when you do what God has called you to do. Let me tell you something that is very powerful. The church was praying for Paul when he was in jail. And God sent that angel. And God set him free. It doesn't matter what you've been bound by. I'm here to tell you. That God will set you free. Today, God will set you free. Some of you were set free last night. God will set you free if you just get up. Look at your neighbor and tell him, get up. How many are going to get up with me? How many are going to get up with me and say, Pastor, I'm going to get up. I'm tired. I'm tired of the enemy coming in. I'm tired of the enemy doing this. I'm tired of the enemy doing that. It's time for me to get up. Can I get an amen in somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. Let us stand up and let us do what God has called us to do. Let us take back our families. Because that's where it starts. A church is built of families. So the church is built of. And when the enemy destroys the family, he knows that the church will be destroyed. It's just time that we take back. How do I do it? Through prayer. Through the leading of the Holy Spirit. Don't just have the Holy Spirit. Don't just have Him. Let Him have you. Give Him control over your life. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. Give Him control over your life. I told the church on Wednesday, I said, if I drink this water, 
I carry this water in my body. And I take this water wherever I go. Can I get an amen? I took a drink of this water right now. And the water is in me. And if I go over there, I'll take the water over there. If I go to the back, I'll take the water. But when I jump into a pool, I no longer have the water in me, but the water has me. When you let God come in and take you, you will no longer have control over your life, but the Spirit of God has control over you. And the Bible says that we have to walk in the Spirit. Let the Spirit of God. He said, Jesus said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He said, He's going to be your teacher. He's going to be your guide. And a guide can only take you wherever He knows. There is not a guide. If you go to San Antonio, you get on those, on, 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 at the river walk, that guy knows everything about every building because He's a guide. He was informed of that. He's not going to tell you something that He does not know. He's only going to tell you what he knows and what he heard from somebody else. So the Holy Spirit will not tell you what he don't know. He's only going to tell you what he heard. That's why Jesus said he's not going to speak on his own behalf. He's going to speak what he heard. He's going to speak. This is amazing. Jesus said, listen, I'm going to go, but I'm coming right back. He said, I was with you, but now I'm going to be in you. And I'm going to show you. And I'm going to teach you. And I'm going to guide you. That's being led by the Holy Spirit. Being led by Him. Can I get an amen? Church, let us start getting led by the Holy Spirit. Let's put foolishness aside. Let's put all these things aside. And let us get up, dust ourselves off, and let all the chains fall off. And then begin to lead. Let the Holy Spirit lead us. And when he leads, wherever he leads, he's going to provide for you. Wherever he guides. If it's God's bill, will is God's bill. Amen. So I want you to stand up right now. And I want us to pray real quick. I want you to pray with me. Hallelujah. I want you just to lift up your hands. I just want you to come up here to the front. Just, just stand right here in the front and let's just pray. Let's ask God to forgive us if we have been sitting down, if, we, if we're all dusty and we have been bound by situations and circumstances in our lives. Just, just ask God to come in and, and do something in our life. Can you just lift up your hands and say, God, I'm sorry today. I come to you. I stand up. I'm going to stand up today and I'm going to take my place. I'm going to stand up today, Lord, and I'm going to do what you have called me to do. God, I believe you. God, I trust you. And God, I know that you will do what you said. Come on, could you just lift up your hands for a moment and say, God, I am here today. God, I will do what you said. I will get up. I know you have sent a man of God. I know you are sending angels my way. I know you are sending people my way, God. So I'm here today to do what you have said. I'm here today to do what you have called me to do. So I'm getting up. And I'm taking my place as a head of the house. As a priest of my home. And I'm taking my place, God. And I'm taking my children back. And I'm taking my wife back. And I'm taking my finances back. And I'm believing, God, that you will give me the strength. And I'm believing, God, for the direction. And I'm believing, God, that you are going to show me. I'm believing, God, that you are coming my way. God, I thank you today. God, I praise you. I'll give you honor and glory. Come on, man. Lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands and say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm taking my, my spot. I'm taking my, I'm stepping into my station. I'm stepping into the place that you have called me to be. I'm here, God. I heard the word. Now I'm going to act on the word. I'm here, God. Now I'm going to do what you have called me to do. Come on, man of God. Lift, lift up your voice and say, God, I'm going to do what you call me to do. God, I'm going to.
to do what you call me to do. I know that if he said it, God, I'm going to believe it and you are going to do it, God. You have not failed me before. You have not failed me before and I know that you are not about to start today. So I praise you and I honor you today, God. We give you glory today, Lord. We honor you. We glorify your name, Jesus. You're amazing, God. You're amazing, God. And we worship you. We worship you. We adore you, God. You're mighty, God. You're mighty, God. Come on, somebody lift up your hands and just worship for a moment. Just worship for a moment. Just worship for a moment. We worship you. We adore you. We lift your name on high. You're amazing. You're powerful. You're mighty, God. You're mighty, God. Yes. Come on, somebody. We lift up your hands to the Lord. We worship you. We worship you.
standing up today. God, we are standing up today. And we're saying no more. No more will we stay sitting down. No more will we slack, Father God. But we're getting up, God. We're getting up, Father God. Hallelujah. And we're doing, God, exactly what you have told us to do. To take our families back. To take this message, Father God, not only in our city, God, but to nations in the name of Jesus. We worship you, God. We honor you, Lord. You're amazing and you're powerful, God. You're an amazing God. You're an amazing God. And we worship you today. We worship you today. You're great and you're mighty, God. You're great and you're mighty, God. You're amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him this morning. Thank you, Lord. 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 Mm, thank you Jesus.
worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give it to him louder. Just give it to him a little bit more louder. Hallelujah. Just thank you, Jesus. We worship you today, God. Hallelujah. You're amazing, God. You're mighty and you're powerful. We worship you today. Thank you, Jesus, for being who you are in our life. Thank you, Jesus, for your leading and your guiding. Thank you for leading us, God. Thank you for empowering us, God, to do great and mighty things on this earth. We thank you, God, and we will take everything back that rightfully belongs to us, God, today. Starting today, in the name of Jesus, we take everything back. We're taking everything back, God, in the name of Jesus. Somebody give God praise with me. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to take a moment to take lunch. So women are preparing that for us back there.